What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 92 and we start today's episode off with a brief look at the league table, as you can see 5 points behind Simone in Zaghi's side with 8 games to go. And we're also clear of Lazio in 3rd place and both us and Inter have a game in hand on Lazio as well, so I think realistically if anyone's going to catch into Milan it's going to be us. Lazio could still make up the ground, but the fact we and Inter both have a game in hand is pretty significant. So on the back of the 3-1 win against Monaco, right now, as we know, 90 minutes away for a place in the Europa League semi-final. Already into the Coppa Italia final as well. We know if our chances of the treble are going to remain alive. I mean, I've been talking about it all season long. Games like this one at home to Bologna have to be bankers, have to be clear wins. We had the first chance of the game. Paolo Gazaniga, a docs legend, making a good save, though, keeping it 0-0. No -no. And in six minutes before the break, Bologna find a little bit of space just inside the area and rip one past Mike to find the back of the net. You know, I often talk about it. You know, when, when the AI have the ball in and around your area, it is just like the warning lights are flashing, like really, really quickly because you know if you miss time a tackle, it's a foul. Their dribbling is so good, you're going to give away a penalty. But if you don't do that and you give them just a little bit of space, they'll find the back of the net. The shot accuracy is so high, you're going to struggle to keep the ball out of the back of your own goal. So, yeah, it was 1-0 to Bologna. We escaped 61 minutes in there as well. That should have been two, thankfully. Just about got away with that. And then 10 minutes to go in the game, still down by a goal. I mean, if we lose this game, seven games to go. Inter could possibly go eight points clear. That would surely do it. We had one last, uh, last chance. Hasn't it crossing? Gutierrez flicking goal bound. And again, it's the Argentine with the save from Hero to villain Paolo Gazzanigo with a man in the match displaying what was eventually a 1-0 loss at the San Siro. And I have to say, I, uh, I I think it's almost over now. Yeah, I keep on talking about it, man. Like, whenever you go into a season and you're asked to win, like, a treble, um, you never asked to win a quadruple, but that could be your objective. I talk about it a lot. Like, sometimes... You just don't have depth. And, you know, you need a little bit of luck to win a treble along the way as well. We haven't had that much of that this season. But you, you do need a lot of depth. You do need a lot of quality and depth. And there's your confirmation. Into a seven games to go, go eight points clear. Don't forget, they got the bare heads head record as well. So we need to beat them by at least a point in order to win the title. With seven games to go now. They've only lost once all season long. They need to lose, like, at least five of their last seven games. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, at least, at least three of their last seven games. Not five but at least three of their last seven games, I think. So, yeah, I, I talk about it a lot. You know, when you're chasing the treble, sometimes you just got to say, one's got to go. You know, you've just got to sacrifice one to have the best possible chance of picking up a double. And if that's going to be the case... I think it's going to need to be the Serie A because heading into the game on Thursday night, it was Monaco, second leg of the Europa League quarterfinal. Like I mentioned, we won the first leg by three goals to one. So it comes to this game. Just needed to stay tight defensively and we'll be into the final four. Well, we conceded very early on. Kareem Adeyemi, who is so good on this year's FIFA, makes it 1-0. And in 21 minutes in, ah, yes. Burn a chance earlier. Wasn't going to miss once again. Roberto Gutierrez had to pick him for this game. Had to start this game. Guy, just in case, just in case we needed a goal, and we did after Monaco got back in the game, and Roberto puts us back up by two over two legs. So 1-1. One, one. But to be fair to Monaco, man, like they did not give up in this game at all. Right before half time, don't ask me what I was doing here, man. Brought out Mike when uh, Luis Suarez had the ball just inside our area. And I don't know it was frustration. I'm not sure what it was because having me playing my best FIFA lately, I just I just kept him out there. And he made a terrible challenge. Definite penalty. And Adiemi converts from a spot to bag his brace. So I'm sitting in there thinking, right, we've got five minutes to go before half time. It's 2-1. We conceded two at the San Siro. And we only conceded one in the south of France. It's pretty clear to me I can't defend, right? Like, defending for me on this year's FIFA is just... It's an almost impossible task. And you might see come the end of the season, we have one of the better defensive records and occasionally our goalkeepers might win the Golden Glove or come runners up. But playing lockdown defense, playing really tight defense, rarely allowing a goal against us is much harder for me to do this year. But the one thing I can do is put the ball in the back of the net. Very, very, very early on into FIFA 22, I talked about how when I started off playing four-minute halves, I couldn't get a goal. 
but conversely, I wasn't conceding many. But ever since I switched from four to six minute halves, I mean, it's just goal galore. And it's just literally every single game seems to be a goal. Like 13 minutes to go and Francisco Santos is on the run. Our centre half is storming forward in a game where at this point tied at 2-2. We didn't need another goal, but our Brazilian centre-back just charges forward and said, no, let's get another one. That's what FIFA is all about at the moment. And he offloads to Hudson Odoi for what was eventually the game winner. So yeah, 3-2 on the night and 6-3, six, 6-3? Uh, six six yeah, 6-3 over two legs. And we are into, for the first time ever, the Europa League semi-final. So into the final four, of the Europa League, I've said that this and the Coppa Italia are our most winnable competitions. I'd say now that the league is all but gone. But we can do it in the Coppa Italia. We've got the final against Inter Milan. We could possibly do it in the Europa League. But the question is, who do we have in the semi-final? Newcastle United, Liverpool or Dortmund? Oh! <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But sometimes you just have to say... Well, the FIFA gods are smiling on me there. Yeah, the Magpies in the final four. Now, no disrespect to Eddie Howe's side whatsoever. If you look at their team here, it's become a four and a half star team in the game. They've, they've done a really, really good job, to be fair, of making great progression with their side, forming an identity and rising from obscurity in the Northeast. But it's not Liverpool and it's not Borussia Dortmund. Let's be totally honest here. Those were the two teams we were desperate to avoid. I really did not want Liverpool. And obviously Dortmund as well. They won the Champions League. Was it three seasons ago now uh, in a save? Or two seasons ago, actually, I think it was. But even so... It is Newcastle United, and again, with no disrespect to the Magpies whatsoever, we had them in the group, lest we forget, and we beat them at St. James's and drew at the San Siro. I think out of the three teams there, you know which one I was secretly, with my fingers crossed, hoping for. We've got them, it's the Magpies in the final four, and again, firm favourites to qualify for the final now, no doubt about it. I don't think it'll be easy. I don't think it'll be routine. If you remember in the group stage, we drew on match day one against them at the San Siro and in the reverse fixture at St. James's, we only came through 2-1 with a late goal, I believe. So I don't think it'll be easy, but we are favourites. And I'd say if we don't make the final from this position, yeah, I'd say I've probably choked it. So a golden chance to reach our second European final back to back against Eddie Howe's Newcastle. If I bottle that, with a board are going to have some very serious questions, asking me to win the treble and going out in the semi-finals of the Europa League and surely about to fall short in the Serie A as well. Because following the draw, we beat Empoli by a goal to nil away from my really poor game. I want Goretzka smacking one in from range, to be honest. Definitely should have been kept out. Really poor goalkeeper, but hey, we'll take the win to keep us within a glimmer of hope of catching into Milan. But the following game, Fiorentina at the San Siro. We've had battles with these guys, with both Brentford and, of course, Milan as well. Europa League with Brentford, lest we forget it was Fiorentina that knocked us out in the quarterfinals. And in Italy as well with Milan, we had them in the Coppa Italia semi-finals, managed to make it through to the final. And, of course, we faced them in Tuscany in the reverse fixture, now here at the San Siro as well. So I feel like Fiorentina are becoming a little bit of like a, a minor rival for us, if you will. They had a lead in the first half through Sesco and then just past the Almar, thankfully rescued and unsurprisingly rescued by Rob. If I ever need a goal, this is the guy I turn to, man. I know Hudson Odoi, Keane, and Timmermans all chip in every now and then, but Rob has 27 goals now in 33 games. I don't think he's going to get the record in this area, which is 36. I think it's a bit too late for that. He needs 9 and 5. For a striker like Rob, it's doable, but it's unlikely. However, I do still think he could get to 30 in his first year in this area. I'd certainly take that. So, yeah, in the end, a 1 1 draw against the Lads from Tuscany, and that, that basically ends it. Inter slips up once again, and I've mentioned it, if, if Inter ever slip up, we have to capitalise. Unfortunately, we did not. A draw ourselves means that the gap remains at eight points with five games to go. It is over. You know, like I've been saying it, one's got to go. Well, it's going, going, and now it's gone. It's over. We ain't going to catch Inter Milan. It was always a pipe dream, and when we had that one chance, we had that one chance all season long that came in the Milan derby when we were the away team. And if you remember, we've been chipping away at that deficit all season long. It cut the gap to three going into the game. And had we won it, we would have gone top. 
That was the one chance we had all season long. I didn't take it and since then Inter have pulled away and this time we ain't going to catch them. So yeah, following game, final one of today's episode. Uh, this was Torino away from home. Obviously, I always say like you always have a soft spot for teams you've done career modes with in the past. If you guys didn't watch it back then, uh, I definitely do recommend it. It was one of my favourite foreign based career modes I did. Um, it was a Torino career mode uh, back in FIFA 15. It was a really, really fun one. It got off to a great start and it just never ever let up. I definitely recommend it. It's a playlist on my channel, but even so, really excited for it. Heading to Turin for this one. Uh, took the lead early. Gutierrez is 28 for the year. Put us in front, but in 27 minutes in, conceded yet another penalty. I've conceded like four or five penalties this season. My discipline has been so, so poor in the back line. It was a bit unfortunate as well, to be fair, because Mike made a great save, and then Santos kind of just like bundled over his man. Totally unintentional, but one of those things, just have to take it. There you go. So, Torino back on level terms with the spot, and in 34 minutes in, golden chance to restore our lead. Timmermans firing over. Still 1-1. Second half begins three minutes after the restart. Unfortunately, this game really could go either way at this point. We've been a better team, but Torino have been threatening themselves, and then four minutes after the break, they would find the goal to get in front for the first time in the game and turn it on its head. Daniel Baselli offloads and Gonzalez smash one into the top corner. It's 2-1. And I don't know whether it was just me being, I don't know, feeling sorry for myself or just thinking, Do you know what? Forget about it. It's not going to happen. We've got the Europa League semi-finals to come. They're more important now because top four is practically guaranteed. But for the league... I'm just not sure we've got any chance of catching into now. Like I said, as the game kicked off, one's got to go, and it's been going, going for a long time, and now I think it's officially gone. Menezes did fire in our leveller off the break to make it 2-2, get his first goal for the club. That was really nice to see. And I was pushing, I was pressing, I was trying to keep the rare chance alive of catching into Milan. Attacked quite a lot in the final stages, but just couldn't find what was going to be the winning goal. So our poor, inconsistent run in the league continues. And this is the reason why Inter Milan are effectively champions. Just give them the crown now. Put the engraving on the trophy now. It's over. We are going to catch them. 2-2 away in Turin. And we look at the lead table. As you can see, four games to go. It's over. We are now dropping to third. We're 10 points beyond. We need to win all of our remaining four. And Inter need to lose all their remaining four. It's over. It was going for a while, and now it's gone. But that will this is the career mode, guys. Massive thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Karima featuring both legs of the Europa League semi-final against Newcastle United very soon.